These books are severely underrated and you need to read them. Add them to your TBR right now. All right, we are going to be starting off this video going straight into the underrated book recs. These are seriously books that I think are severely underrated that people should be talking about more and more people should be reading. Some books may be a little bit more known than others, but still I feel like I never see people talking about these books. We are going to go by genre. We are going to talk about some romance, some fantasy, and some kind of like mystery thrillers. So we're going to start off strong with romance because that is the most amount of books I have to talk about because I mostly read romance. Romance. So starting off strong, these are the first two romance books I ever read. They hold a very, very special place in my heart and I actually plan on rereading them soon because I loved them that much. This is definitely an auto buy author for me. I absolutely love the writing in these books, the story, everything. And with that being said, it is The Worst Best Man and The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. These are both interconnected standalone so you can read them in whatever order you want, but The Worst Best Man is technically the first one and then The Wedding Crasher. To start with The Worst Best Man, again, this was the first of a romance book I ever read and I fell so utterly in love with it. This book follows Max and Lena. Lena used to be engaged to Max's older brother and he ends up standing her up at the altar and now years later her and Max have to work on a work project together. So it's kind of like an enemies to lovers type deal. Oh my god, when I tell you guys that this book was just so good, I still think about these two books so frequently and I read them in 2022. I loved the writing style of this. I love how our main character is black and Brazilian. Brazilian, so we get some glimpses of her speaking to her family in Portuguese, which I did not understand a single word of the Portuguese I was reading, but nonetheless, I absolutely loved it. I thought it added so much like depth to the story and to our main character. I really felt the mental and emotional connection between these two main characters, the tension and the banter, and just literally the whole plot line in general was so, so good. I actually am so surprised that people do not talk about this book more because I personally loved it. And then The Wedding Crasher is my personal favorite of the two. This one follows Salone and Dean, and Dean is Max's best friend. So that's kind of where we have the tie-in. And Salone is Lena's cousin. I'm pretty sure that's right. It's been a while since I read this. I'm pretty sure that's right. So Salone and Lena are cousins, and then Max and Dean are best friends. This one is a fake dating trope, which is literally this book made me realize that fake dating is my favorite trope, and ever since it still is. I loved how the fake dating was done in this, and when I tell you the ending of this book was so good, like I still think about the ending of this book to this day. It was so good. It might be a little cheesy, but it was like the sweetest thing ever, and I'm so obsessed with it. I I'm obsessed with the plot line of this, the relationship between our two main characters in this book, and just every little detail. I was eating this book up from start to finish, absolutely in love. I think these books are actually severely underrated. I think more people need to read them, and I would really love if you read them. And if you do, let me know what you think. And if you have, also let me know what you think. Wow, it just got really dark in here. Do you guys notice that? It just got very dark in here. What just happened? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving on from that, the next book is Something from Tiffany's by Melissa Hill. This is so freaking good. Now, let me just start by saying that this did become a movie, and the movie is nothing compared to the book. The plot line is completely different. It's completely thrown off. I hated the movie. I hated the movie because it did not portray what the book is at all, in my opinion. And I loved this book so, so much. I would say this is a perfect book book to read a kind of around Christmas time because this does take place kind of around and after Christmas. We have these two separate couples that we're following that are from Ireland that are in New York City to celebrate Christmas and something happens, their lives intersect, and we're kind of just following them to kind of figure out what happened and how to fix it. This book felt like one of those fairy tales where every single thing has to go wrong in order for the right thing to happen. It was so, so beautiful. This also has no smut in it, so I would say this is an excellent book for those of you out there who steer clear from smut or just prefer books without it. This is so, so good. I actually cannot get over the amount of love I had for this story and for this book. It was so, so good. Every single second of it, every word, I just loved it. It was actually so, so good. I actually can't get over it. I have truly never seen a single person talking about this on Book Talk, BookTube, Bookstagram, anything. I haven't seen a single person talking about it. It is severely underrated. More people need to read this book. It's so 
freaking good. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. It's so good. It's so good. Let's not let you get a peek of those. Anyways, <laughs> the next book is Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. This is not my favorite romance book I've ever read, but I do think it's underrated. This also came out with a movie and the movie was horrible compared to the book, but I really enjoyed this story and this book. I think I gave this like a four, four and a half out of five stars. Really, really enjoyed it. This book kind of follows like a girl who kind of used to have a bad side and now she's trying to turn over a new leaf, but she's kind of being tempted to go back to her old way because now she enters into this little bargain with this guy who fights in an underground fighting ring and he's just kind of like a bad boy and he's also very popular on this college campus. So we kind of have that dynamic of like these two people meeting and then creating this little bargain and yeah, it's really fun. I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the romance. I really felt the emotional connection between these two characters and overall, I just really, really liked it. I will say though, if you read this, God, please don't, please don't watch the movie. It was so bad. It was so bad. I'm sure Sure you've seen TikToks of people posting a clip of this movie to talk about how bad it was. It had not coal. Coal and something. What is his name? Why can I not think of his name? Dylan. Dylan. It has a Dylan Sprouse in it and it was just not good. It just wasn't. The movie wasn't, but the book is really good and I would highly recommend. Now this is the most recent romance I'm adding to this list. This is a five star read for me. I actually listened to this on Audible, but I know I would give it a five star had I sat and read the book. It is so good. This book has so much more depth to it than just being a romance book. There is so much talk of mental health and like mental health awareness and just also talk about like from the perspective of someone who is mixed and the kind of things that they go through internally with that kind of being their life. There is so much depth to this story, but also the romance in this book was so freaking good. I actually cannot stress to you how much I loved this book, loved the romance, literally everything about this book. I loved. It is literally a six star read. It's so good. I cannot believe people do not talk about this book more. People do not read this book more. It actually is astonishing to me because of how amazing it is. Oh my god. It's so good. It's so good. Let me actually tell you what it is. It's The Stand-In by Lily Chu. Again, so freaking good. I like actually cannot stress you. I could sit here and just say that over and over and over again. There is so much more to this than just being a romance. This also is another one that has no smut. It kind of alludes to that, but they don't go into detail about it. They really only talk about like them kissing and it was just so good. I loved every single second of listening to this book. I would have loved every single second had I just sat and read it. It was so good. And going on with this book, this author also has two more books in this series that are interconnected standalones. The second one is The Comeback, which I have already also listened to on Audible. They are on Audible for free, all three of them, which is how I've listened to them. I don't own the physical copies of the last two, but I am currently listening to the third one, which is The Takeover. The second one was so, so good also. I do think I probably like, I don't know, I think I might have liked them equally. They were both so good. And like I said, I'm currently listening to the third one, so I don't have a full opinion on that one yet, but I am already loving it. She just knows how to write really good romance with there being no smut, but also the plot line and the story of the actual book has so much depth to it as well, and the characters have so much depth to them as well, that I feel like it's just so good. It's hard to not love. Ugh, please read this. Like, I'm actually being so serious. Listen to it on Audible, pick up the physical copy, and read it. Get it on your Kindle or on your phone, something. Please read it. It's so good, and it's severely, 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 severely underrated. Please. I'm actually begging you. I'm actually begging you at this point. And then the last books in the romance section I'm going to be talking about is the Moo Yu series. I've personally only read two of the books in this series so far, which is Holdout and Playmaker. I think it's like the fifth and the ninth in the series. They're interconnected standalones that are hockey romances, so you don't have to read them in any particular order if you don't want to. But the two I have read from this series so far, I have loved, and they are all by different authors. Every single book in the series is by a different author, and it follows a different guy on the hockey team, and I love that aspect of it that you read the whole series, but you're getting bits from every different author, kind of reading slightly different writing styles and stuff like that. I just think it's so fun, and they are honestly honestly just such quick easy reads. The two that I have personally read have both been under 300 pages. I've loved the romance aspect of it and I am just a, a sucker. I am a sucker for a hockey romance. I love them so much. So these are just great books. If you are a sports romance person or maybe you want to try a hockey romance but you don't want to go for like icebreaker that's super super long. Well that's not super super long but like it's 400 something pages. So like if you want something shorter whatever. I also feel like these are such good books to help get you out of a reading slump if you're in one so I would highly recommend those. I can't wait to continue reading more books in that series because the two I've read so far, I have really, really enjoyed. Moving on to some mystery thrillers. I only have two and they are both YA. The first one is The Lake
by Natasha Preston. I read this book, I want to say almost a year ago and absolutely loved it. The ending of this book had me completely floored and I thought it was like, like criminal how amazing the ending of this was because it wasn't necessarily a happy ending, but the way she ended it was just like a masterpiece, a literal work of art. And I loved it so freaking much. I really, really loved the plot line and the story of this. We're basically following these two girls who are best friends. They went to this summer camp years ago. They did something really bad and haven't been back since, but now they're going back as camp counselors. And then they start getting some really weird anonymous messages that are hinting that somebody knows what they did and is going to expose them. And it's really, really fun. I am someone who gets scared very, very easily. So reading this book gave me enough thrill to keep me on the edge of my seat, kind of keep me on my toes and keep me invested and kind of scratch that itch for wanting to read a mystery thriller without scaring me so much that I can't sleep because that will happen to me. I'm literally a baby. So I really, really enjoyed this. I think more people should read this truly. It is so good. And then the last mystery thriller, again, also a YA is Murdered at 17 by Christine Conrad. This also was turned into a movie. And surprisingly enough, I actually really liked this movie. It's not the best movie I've ever watched. You could tell it was a little bit low budget, maybe a little lower production actresses and actors that haven't really done much. So maybe the acting isn't great, but it actually followed the actual plot line and premise of the book without veering off too much, you know, cause there's gotta be minor changes because going from a book to a show or a movie is gonna change some things. But I felt like it actually kept the actual feeling and plot line of this book intact, which was great. But I really enjoyed this story. I thought this was really fun. Again, with the thing of like keeping me on the edge of my seat, giving me the thrill and keeping me invested without making me scared. This book follows Brooke. We're in her POV the whole time. And it's basically about how she has this disorder that causes her to fly into uncontrollable and sometimes violent rages because of a cheerleading stunt that went wrong years ago. Now her best friend has ended up being murdered and she thinks she's the one who did it because she can't remember what happened when it happened. So that's kind of the plot line of this. It's so good. There is a romance in this that plays a really big part in like the main plot line. Like she meets him at the beginning of the book. So that's not a spoiler. Don't you worry. Um, it's also in the synopsis. So again, don't you worry, not a spoiler, but I did really, really enjoy this. I thought this was a really fun read and I would highly, highly recommend, especially if you are maybe a little bit younger or again, you're like me and you get scared easily. I would definitely recommend this. And moving on into some fantasies. Now, the last book I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be my all time favorite fantasy that is so severely underrated that people seriously need to read. But before we get into that one, we're going to get into a few other ones. So first we have the Grimrose Girls duology. The first one is the Grimrose Girls and the second one is the Wicked Remain. This is a YA duology that is kind of like YA fiction, fantasy, and like a fairy tale kind of aspect. The main premise and plot of the first book and kind of both books, because I'm not going to lie, this kind of ends on like a cliffhanger. So it's kind of like just one big story about the same people and the same situation, if you will. But the main plot line is you're following these four girls who go to this boarding school. Three of those four girls, one of their best friends from the school ends up getting found dead and they rule it as a suicide. And then this new girl who is the fourth of the four girls, does that make sense? They all figure out that she actually didn't commit suicide and she was actually murdered and she wasn't the first girl to get murdered at this boarding school. And then they find out that all of these murders are linked back to ancient fairy tale curses and they have to figure out how to stop the curse to stop more girls from ending up dead. That is literally basically the synopsis. So again, I'm not spoiling anything, but I really, really enjoyed these books. I've never seen anyone talking about them and I think they were so, so good. I actually loved the plot line of these. I thought it was very fun. If you are someone who likes like dark academia, fairy tale type vibes, I feel like you would absolutely love these and eat them up. They are a little chunky, but I thought they were again, so, so good, thoroughly enjoyed and would highly, highly recommend. I will say there's like one scene in the first one that scared me so bad where I actually threw my book and told Makai like, I can't finish reading this book because it just, there's one specific thing they do in horror movies or scary movies, whatever you want to call it. That is actually like the scariest thing to me. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to say what it happened, but that happened in the book and I got so scared. But other than that, I loved them. They were so good. Again, I would highly recommend, especially if you like a dark academia. Next, we have a series of four books and that is the Lachlan Feud series by Robin D. Mall and L. Madison. I read this whole series, I want to say in the span of like three weeks. It was so good and I ate it up, flew through it. The first one is Scarlet Princess. Then we have Tarnished Crown, Crimson Kingdom, and Obsidian Throne. This series basically follows this girl. She is our main character. We're in her perspective for the majority of the 
the time. I want to say the second book, then we get dual POV, if I'm remembering correctly. I read these like months ago, so I'm trying to remember. But I think the first book is like only in her perspective. I think that could be wrong. That could be wrong. But I loved this series so much. So this series basically follows her. She's a princess. Basically, we have two kingdoms on opposite sides of like a big mountain. She is from one side and she ends up getting caught smuggling under the mountain by the people on the other side. And they basically kind of take her captive and figure out what they're going to do with her because if they kill her, which is her getting caught for smuggling in their area is punishable by death, then that'll start a war. And it's just this whole thing because she's a princess, like I said. So it's just this whole thing. And it was such a fun book. This has some like aspects of Faye and like stuff like that in it. And it has a very heavy plot of romance. So if you're someone that's been wanting to get into fantasy, I would say this is a great series to start with because the romance is so heavy. It's also a very simple and easy written fantasy book. This first book is not going to be too much world building to where it's confusing and it's hard to understand and it's boring. No, it gets right on into the story and we just keep going. It's so, so good. I enjoyed every single book so much. Every single book I think is like a four stars or higher and I think two of the four are five star reads for me. So good. Highly, highly, highly would recommend. And that leads us to the last book in this video, my favorite fantasy I've ever read. The second book to this actually comes out May 30th and I am so excited. I'm literally so utterly excited to finally read more because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this does end on a cliffhanger, but this is a YA fantasy. It's the first fantasy I've ever read. I tried to read Akatar multiple times and I couldn't get into it and then I found this, got it for $1.99 on my Kindle, downloaded it, literally read it in like 24 hours. It was so good and I'm still think about it all the time and that is Heavy as the Crown by Lindsay J. When I tell you I've seen not a single soul talk about this, I've looked it up on TikTok and only ever seen the author talk about it. More people need to read this. This is a book that seriously, if you slide into my DMs asking me for a book recommendation, I'm telling you this 100% of the time. It is so good and I have actually had multiple of you guys actually read it and I'm pretty sure almost every single one of you has rated it at least a four stars, but it's so good, genuinely. The plot line of this is so fun. It's like nothing I've ever read, even still now that I've been reading more fantasy. We're basically following two modern teens that are best friends. They end up somehow falling through a portal into a medieval realm that's in the middle of a centuries long war. They end up separated on opposite sides of the centuries long war and they're trying to find their way back to each other to figure out how to get home. It's so good. I am a medieval type of girly. I love movies and shows and books with the medieval kind of vibe. Just think Game of Thrones and they have like their armor of like silver and they got their swords and like I just love that kind of vibe and like that was this. It was so so good. I actually cannot stress how much I love this. There, I do not have enough words to describe how much I love this book. This book is severely underrated. I actually wish I could force every single reader out there to read this book because I just it more people need to read it. More people need to read it so please read it. It's so good and I can't I cannot wait for the second one to come out. We have just barely over a month for the second one and I'm so excited. That is the last book in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have read any of these down below if you have what you thought of them or if you're gonna read any of them. Also let me know. Also let me know down below if you have any underrated book recommendations that you want me to read in a video because I would love to do a video reading your guys's underrated book recommendations. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already because we have a lot of fun over here and we want you to join the fun. And with that being said, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one. Peace. I also just blacked out filming that one and I am now out of breath. Severely, oh, severely underrated. Hey guys. August slipped away into a moment of time. To my channel. Wow, I forgot my intro. I haven't done it in so long. Remember when I pulled up the standalone intercom? <laughs> but that are <laughs> me, me behind the mall. So much for some love. This doesn't look too bad. I don't own the paper and then, oh wait, that might be a spoiler. This one follows Salone and date. <laughs> Dan, no. I'm actually really hurting my leg sitting like that. And I can see us twisted in bed sheets. I get slipped away. Ooh, I'm hurting my leg sitting like that. Just to like help get you out of so What? Okay, moving on to the why. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a why. <laughs> what? These trucks are being kind of noisy. This section, I'm gonna. What did I just say? Type vibe. I said that really weird. My throat kind of hurts because it just talks so much.
I don't know what I'm doing.